Welcome, everyone. My name is Marina Antunes, Festival Director for Spark Animation, and I want to welcome you to this entry into our Meet the Filmmaker series. I'm very excited to have with me today uh, Ben Meinhart, who is the director of Living the Dream, which was awarded the Director's Prize at this year's Spark Animation. Welcome to Spark, Ben. Hello. Good to be here. Before we talk about your project, I wanted to find out a little bit more about you and how you got into animation. You want to share a little bit of your story? Um, I, I've i been in Vancouver for about 20 years now, <sighs> somehow. And um, uh, I came up here to VFS originally. Um, I'm from I'm from the States originally, actually, um, from Missouri. There's that scene in the film where, you know, he's lifting off away from an idyllic, you know, rural scene. I, that's not too far from the truth. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I mean, there's, there's no animation in the middle of the United States, you know. So, I came out here and, uh, you know, have seen everything with my own eyes, you know, as documented in my film. So, I, I'm curious if, it, you know, growing up in a place where animation isn't really a thing that you do for work, how did that even ever become something that you thought that's what I want to do? I don't. I guess it's just. It's just something you're you're drawn to. I, I mean, I would make flip books out of my dad's stationery from his work, you know, and um, I, I don't know. I, you just you just you just you follow your dream, <laughs> and it was <laughs> and it was possible at that, that because I was born in 1977 to do this. So, um, but yeah, it's not it's not. Um, it's not, you know, if you tell a relative or something on animation, they always just say, oh, so you're going to go work for Disney. Because there's no other concept of animation. Like in Japan, you know, it's just there's all sorts of levels for different audiences, for different genres. And um, here it's just, you know, oh, you're going to go make cartoon Saturday morning cartoons. That's the only thing that exists. So, yeah. Well, you are proof that there is more to just Saturday morning cartoons in Disney. And I wanted to ask you, let's talk a little bit about Living the Dream. Where did the concept and the idea for the movie come from? Just looking out my window. <laughs> I mean, I, I live, this doesn't mean anything to anyone who's not local, but I, I live in like North Burnaby, Brentwood. They're building dozens of towers. It's literally, it's hardly an exaggeration anymore. Um, and I, I actually um, recorded the song right before the pandemic. And I, because, you know, it's like things weren't great then either. And I, I kind of, I kind of put it in my, on my pile of, yeah, maybe I'll make it, maybe I won't. Like it seemed a little too self-pitying or something. It was like the problem, you know, there was, the, things were unaffordable, things were bad, but, you know, things got worse. <laughs> and, you know, it just becomes so overwhelming that it's like, you know, it's in the public discourse. It just felt like I had to birth this film, you, you know, like I had to, like, it just seemed like I had to finish it. It's a very similar thing happened with my previous film. I don't know if you saw that BS, it was in the Spark Festival. Yeah. Same thing. I made it. Oh, this is too over the top. You, you know, the United States isn't going to collapse from fascism. Then COVID hit. And suddenly it didn't seem that exaggerated anymore. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, it's just it's just it really is just from firsthand experience of what what we're all experiencing. Um, you know, you mentioned the music and I, I had some, that as a note to talk about a little bit later. But let's talk about that now. Is music the way that your um, stories first start to take shape? Is that how things start for you is with song? Uh, yeah, quite often. Yeah. Um, so sometimes you know, a, a fair number of my shorts are really just songs. <laughs> and then um, some, sometimes, sometimes I'll have something, I'll record something and I don't know where it will fit. And then I'll, like, I had this really horrible, crappy keyboard from Costco. I think I had bought my son. It was, it was, it was a, it's like a, you know, it's a digital keyboard, but it wasn't even in tune somehow. It was like, huh, 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 huh. And it, I, it was somehow that was inspiring how ridiculous it was. And then it turned into one of my other shorts. So, yeah, it, that was even more abstract of an inspiration. Um, 
Um, but yeah, I, I, music, I, I mean, music is probably my biggest hobby just on the side too. I just, you know, I spend more time improving, fiddling around on the guitar than improving my visual art, which <laughs> might be apparent I don't know so you know with the case of like the dream you gave you've given us already a little bit of a timeline of how that came to be so you wrote the song uh pre-pandemic uh things clearly like you say got worse so you know at what point did you decide this is the not going to be my next project I, I think it's just it's just like it's just a um well first of all the fact that I had it the song ready to go <laughs> It helps um, for what I'm going to do next. And it's just like, when you see, just seeing what's happening out there, it just, it just, it's like, I have to make this like, it's, it's, it's so topical now. Um, you know, it, it's, it would be, a, it would be a tragedy to not make it if it's already this far ahead, you know, you know, it's like, I'm ahead of the story a little, like, you know, if things were bad in 2020, you know, it's, but I, I hope I, I keep joking that like, I hope these films I make don't age well. You know, I, I mean, I think that's sometimes my hesitancy. I'm like, oh, I'm being too negative or, oh, look in five years, everything will be better. And then I'll look back and be like, oh, geez. But it's like, that's not what, unfortunately the world is coming <laughs> to meet the, these, um, exaggerated pessimistic visions what do i what am i working on next Prof prophetic you know this is kind of something that you know you say kind of jokingly but you really are capturing like the moment as it is now i mean film one of the the advantages of film is you know it it, it often will capture whatever is in the zeitgeist in that moment and you really have with you know a short film that's less than two minutes long you've completely encapsulated like a number of you know, social political issues that are currently in discussion, not just here, but everywhere, you know, the, the gig economy, the fact that housing is so unaffordable, the cost of life is so unaffordable, uh, this idea that the, the dream uh, is not really like a thing that we can aspire to anymore. And all of this in two minutes in a really, really catchy song to boot. I think one minute and 15 seconds. <laughs> yeah, so even less. <laughs> which was a which was quite a challenge because I, I originally had this whole long sort of slow intro. It was like a very dystopian. He's going to this gray office and he's just like, you know, really happy and everyone's around him just hunched over. And and I and then it was gonna kind of then he was gonna break into song and it would be kind of the same. And that kind of worked, but I couldn't. I couldn't get it to work. The whole thing would have been twice as long. And I, but then I had the challenge of, okay, if I'm going to tell the whole story only as the music's playing, I have like two bars of intro horns or whatever da -da 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 -da, to set, set the scene, get everything ready to go before he breaks out into song. And that was actually pretty hard um, challenge. That was a, a good challenge to try to like, I have to bombard the viewer with a whole lot of information in a really short amount of time and have it read. So that was that was hard. Um, but I, th it's, I think it worked. I mean, tonally, it's a really interesting uh, project as well, because, you know, you have this music that the music itself is quite light and upbeat, but the themes of the song are very dark and very depressing. And then you have this character who is... Like from the moment you see him with that giant smile, you're like, oh, this is such a nice, likable guy. Yeah, exactly. Very <laughs> affable. But then, you know, everything else around him is dark and gray and there's almost no color in the film. It's all very sort of gray toned. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, striking the balance and capturing like just keeping that tone because it's so it's such a fine line that you walk and it could have easily just gone totally sideways. Yes, I I. I the past two films I have done have have dealt with um, social political issues. And, you know, that was a little bit sort of like, is this something I even want to mess with? <laughs> um, a, a, yeah, you have to keep it entertaining. Like, I think, especially if I'm going to make, you know, a cartoon, you know, you, you can... I still think, no, even if you're addressing the, the darkest subjects of death of a parent or something, you still have to make it like uh, enjoyable to watch. It's like if you're trying to depict 
boredom in a movie. You don't make it boring. You find a way, uh, you know, to keep it entertaining. That's it's that's important, I think, especially with today's people's attention spans. I, I was spying on my son watching it for the first time, and he made it almost all the way to the end. He's twelve. I was like, okay, I succeeded, because you know he's just flipping through YouTube shorts, you know, or you know, I mean that's that is the audience these days. Film festivals are a little bit different because you have a captive audience in a theater. You can so you can set the mood, you know, <laughs> you can have an establishing shot and not lose 90 percent of the viewers. Um, but but yeah, yeah, it, it is a it is a balance. Um, you know, how, 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 how pitiful do I want this guy to be, you know, but also you gotta, you, I'm trying to communicate a point too. So. And, and do you keep that sort of in the back of your mind as you were making this, that, you know, a part of your audience may only have the attention span of 60 seconds. I'm afraid I only have an attention span of 60 <laughs> seconds. I only have, I say, I mean, I, I see people making feature-length films and I don't understand not for attention span just in terms of labor how they're doing it um yeah I I, th I feel like yes I like what like that change I was talking about earlier where I had this long intro establishing of the, the mood or the tone and I just thought would this be better if I just trim the fat and just get right into it and you know I think I think everyone's I mean art is always changing um, what we think is good. And, and, and I'm, I mean, for better or for worse, our attention spans are just being shredded. And I, my, I think mine too, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not isolated from this world of scrolling and clicking and, you know, so, so yeah, I, 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 I do think, you know, it is in the, in my mind a little bit, but I think it's also just what appeals to me. So so from the time that you, you know, decided that this was going to be your next project to the time when you actually finished, what, what sort of, what was your timeline like? Well, um, I guess over three years ago, I come up with the idea and make the song and then you just throw it in a pile and ignore it for three years. You, you know, you just try, you can't figure out how to make it work. And then once I actually was in production on it, like really trying to put all my spare time into it was about eight eight months other than you know the actually like trimming the fat and 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 figuring out what your story was going to look like what was your biggest technical challenge for making the project if you had any well well I think I I kind of might have already mentioned that it was more of an artistic challenge I guess it was an artistic challenge of just to, how how am I going to cram in I have to tell a complicated story and very time limited I only have this line only lasts three seconds. I have to just make it just making sure stuff reads on the screen, even though it's I mean, there's a lot happening really fast. So that was that was the challenge for this one, I would say. Uh, and and do you do all of the work yourself? Because I noticed one of the things is there are no credits either. Yeah, it's all me, which I, I used to think, oh, that's so cool. I do it all on my own. And now in my in my aging wisdom, I realized, oh, this is because maybe I can't stand working with other people. I mean, it's actually because if you're really good at collaborating and you come up with a good vibe with another person, you can make so much more stuff. Um, but yes, I do all of it. Um, I've I have worked on projects where I have I have someone work on the backgrounds. Yeah, mostly background help collaboration. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's all, it's all me. It's just like, that's why I'm only producing one, one minute every couple of years. Well, and then, you know, that was going to be my next question is you seem to be, um, really at the, you're very in tune with what's happening in the world and, you know, you're creating these songs that you might not get to for some time. Um, I'm assuming there's probably stuff in your back catalog of music that, you know, you've created and is sat in the pile that maybe now is not, relevant anymore so you know does that ever kind of push you to produce more or do you are those just songs that you know they they, they served its their purpose even if they didn't become movies oh you mean like like as a kick in the butt like because yeah yeah yeah, yeah i don't I, I don't have my next 
prediction, unfortunately, like my next prophecy, prophetic song depicting the next uh, societal collapse point. I I, ha- I have a song in my mind. It's like a, about global warming, but but look to what we were talking about earlier. That one's just it's just very depressing and sad. And I'm you know it's like I don't necessarily want to make that one. <laughs> like how can I make that one interesting? If you feel like a viewpoint from far in the future, looking back is kind of the is kind of the perspective of it. I, I'm kind and of it, already foreseeing a future where we have the Ben Meinhart collection. <laughs> of you know 15 short films that predict the society for 25 years yeah oh he could look into the future he must have been super rich or just very much in tune with what's going on in the world and you know opting yeah. to talk about hard subjects that you know are not really addressed in animation yeah yeah i'm trying to i don't i always just wanted to make i don't have any strategy I, i've been approached a couple of times to if I wanted to like pitch a series or something and I just, I I don't have, as someone asked me for a series, I just, I blank out. I'm like, I, I don't, I I don't really watch very many TV series. (laughs) Honestly, it's just, it's like a money-making format. You know, I understand why it exists, but yeah, I just, I've always just, I'm just, yeah, I'm happy to just pump out these films that I have to make for whatever reason, you know? I know, I think you kind of already alluded to this, but I'm assuming you may not have your next project already lined up. Um, I have a few I, I, ideas of what I might, might do. Um, but yeah, I have, I haven't decided. I haven't decided. I, I, yeah. And they're all song based. So I would kind of, I would kind of like to maybe try to do one that's not song based just for the challenge of it. I have done a couple of those and it was, it was, it was, it was fun. It was, I had to do the dialogue. I had to pretend like an old lady and, and, you know, you know, like it was, it was, uh, it was fun. It was really difficult. Like it was just something I hadn't really done before too much. Um, but yeah, I, I have, I have my little folder on my computer of, of embryonic things that may or may not ever exist. Well, we certainly hope that we will get to see your next project sooner rather than later. Again, congratulations on Living the Dream, which is playing at Spark, but is also playing, it just started its festival career. So I expect we're gonna see a lot more of it in the coming months. Uh, Congratulations. And uh, thank you so much for your time today. It's been really lovely talking to you. Yeah, it was fun. Thank you.